Today is a big video, a very big video. I'm excited and I'm not gonna beat around the bush. This video is going to be pretty critical of a certain 2016 sci-fi masterpiece, Arrival. Have you seen it? Good. I want your opinions because I don't understand why this movie is, well, liked. If you haven't seen it, well, spoilers ahead, obviously, and also just in my opinion, they're not missing much, but according to Rotten Tomatoes, the majority of people disagree with me there, so feel free to listen to them instead. Indeed, the majority of people I've asked have claimed to love the movie, or at least to have enjoyed it, and this phenomenon has perplexed me so much that I've asked a lot of people, bump into me at a house party and there's a non-zero chance, do you like the movie Arrival, will be my conversation opener, followed by an interrogation of why. And this is where it gets interesting because the answers I've received have been pretty vague. Mostly that it was cool or that it really made them think. So if you love the movie Arrival, I would love you please to have a think about what makes this movie work for you, what you got out of it, and uh, let me know in the comments below. I am very open to understanding why the movie appeals so strongly to some people and yet fell so flat for me. To recap quickly, Arrival centers around the role academic translator Louise Banks plays in helping the US military communicate with a mysterious alien species that lands on Earth, with the aim of learning what these invaders want. The story escalates as the Chinese military believe the aliens pose a threat and push to attack, whilst Louise is convinced the creature's intentions are not harmful. She goes inside the alien's spacecraft and is gifted with fluency in their language. As their language has no concept of time, she is therefore able to see the future and see what she needs to do to convince the Chinese military leader to hold fire. My recap probably shows some of my bias, but before we can dive into the movie, I really do have to acknowledge the linguistics behind it from the view of a linguistic student and how the inaccuracies in this regard do make me a harder to immerse audience member, possibly contributing to some of that bias. First and foremost, Louise Banks is not a linguist, or at least she is not introduced as a linguist or referred to as a linguist. She is a world-renowned translator. And whilst perhaps she is both, given it's her linguistic abilities that are needed, I find it very odd that this is not what she is introduced or referred to as. I would expect that the most qualified individuals for the task of decoding an alien language would be individuals with extensive experience in decoding languages that they do not speak, something Louise is not mentioned to have at all. She even acknowledges this briefly, that deciphering the alien speak is very different to translating Farsi, a language she speaks. However, the movie does not acknowledge at all that these two tasks are actually so different that someone world-class, crema for crema for later, is very unlikely to be the best of the best at the former. Now, I do suspect that Louise is actually meant to be a linguist. I wonder if maybe a decision was made that labelling her occupation as translator would just be more accessible to the audience, but I do still hold a grudge because, well, why make a movie about linguistics and be too scared to say the word linguist? Less easy to look past is just, it doesn't make sense. The premise is that the sapper wharf hypothesis, specifically the strong form now known as linguistic determinism that proposes linguistic categories, the language we speak, and words we have available in it, limits or restricts our cognitive categories, the things we can think about. As the alien species, they are called heteropods, as the heteropods language has no concept of time, 
when speaking this language, you do not have a concept of time. The movie pushing this to the far extreme that not being able to think in terms of time would allow you to see the future and experience life with no past, present or future. It's the sort of hyper extension of a concept that would usually be used in the thick of a debate to belittle the idea, but if the premise of the story is linguistic determinism is real, then okay, I guess we can go to the extremes. What I really struggle to look past is the explanation of why the heteropods language has no concept of time. Not because they don't have tense or they don't have words for time, an explanation I would have rolled my eyes at, but fine, if we're doing this that works, I guess. Instead, the heteropod language is explained to have non-linear orthography. That is, their written language can be written all at once, like if you used a stamp to write a sentence. You would be forming a whole sentence in one single press of ink against the page. Be careful trying it, you might just find yourself seeing disturbing visions of the future. <laughs> I do kinda see what they are getting at. And I like that they are acknowledging that we don't need a word for time to experience time through our language. However, it's truly not possible for a language to be 100% indifferent to time. The movie itself shows this, the creatures creating one sign after the other. The orthography, morphology, and maybe even syntax of the written language might be simultaneously produced, but larger discourse or the way phrases, clauses, and sentences are strung together to form meaning is still influenced by time. And of course, all of this is ignoring that the heteropods also have a spoken language. With all of that negativity, I do actually like some of the concepts raised by the movie surrounding linguistics. The movie, I think, actually does a good job of highlighting the complexity of semantics, the way language conveys meaning, in an accessible way that also showcases how fascinating the topic is. Louise breaking down the parts of teaching the alien to understand the question, what is your purpose? The discussion about how input impacts output when it comes to what the aliens mean by weapon. Honestly, a Hollywood movie exploring high risk semantic ambiguity, count me in. If the movie had been about that entirely, no seeing the future, just actual aliens landing and a planetary war nearly breaking out due to communication attempts gone wrong, that's cool. Well, for me it's cool. <laughs> it would have placed Louise center stage in actively preventing the war, needing to prove her thesis and convince the military that there are other explanations. But I guess that is probably a little academic and wouldn't have the broadest audience. So instead, we've got all this time travel stuff shoved in to bring some action and absurdity. <laughs> the linguistics reduced mostly to a token look at how smart we all are for tackling these academic topics. I'm harsh, I know, but I'm harsh for a good reason. And that's because, frankly, the weird take on the Sapper Wharf hypothesis is the most forgivable of a rival's crimes. I know that Hollywood is not going to represent any occupation or field correctly. I've watched and enjoyed movies with hacking montages showing fast typing and green glowing gobbledygook on a blank screen. I know that's not how it works, but I suspend my disbelief and just enjoy the story. And whilst I think it's important to acknowledge that my linguistic background does make me a harder audience member to immerse, even looking past my issues with the logic, I did not find this movie enjoyable. For me, the absolute biggest issue was extremely simple. Louise is not a likeable character. I'm sure Louise is a lovely person, but unfortunately, watching the movie, I really know nothing about her, how her mind works, 
what her thoughts are, what her struggles are. I don't have any reason to connect to her to care about her, to be engaged by watching her overcome the struggles within the story and triumph. Louise barely talks. I understand the logic behind having a blank canvas for a character. I understand the logic behind having a character be mysterious, unknowing, a bit of an enigma, but in the context of Louise being employed by the military to lead a team of language experts her refusal to answer a question or explain herself does not come across as mysterious. It comes across as arrogant. This is her job. She needs to be able to justify her use of resources, her decisions. She needs to be able to share progress updates. Everyone around her says she is brilliant. But all we, the audience, see is her refusal to communicate. It doesn't come across as strong or having a backbone or asserting herself. It comes across as Louise being someone I would be infuriated to work with. As well as barely speaking and certainly not opening up with the audience in any verbal way, Louise also has some extremely stilted reactions. They do show her somewhat freaking out over seeing the aliens breathing heavily. Obviously, the main male character, Ian, had to be shown throwing up in response to seeing the aliens, but at least we do get to see a little bit of a reaction from Louise to the events unfolding. I wish it could have led to some bonding between the characters or some insight into how she responds to overwhelming situations. Breathing heavily is not a lot. And yet, it's the most we get. Even more than this, Louise's lack of reaction impacts the audience perceival of a key plot point. Her visions of the future. I know this is supposed to be some great gotcha moment. She has visions throughout the movie, starting after her first exposure to the heteropods language. I'm supposed to get that Oh my god, it's so obvious, how did I not realise she was seeing the future and it's related to the aliens moment when it's all revealed. But I don't, because I know why I didn't realise. I know why I was never going to consider that these were flash forwards or anything super out of the ordinary. Because Louise does not react appropriately to seeing vivid visions of the future. There's no shock, concern, worry, freaking out what is happening. It's just mildly troubled expression, which of course matches perfectly with the assumption that she is seeing flashbacks. Flashbacks to past memories she doesn't really want to relive. The visions would have provided a great opportunity to develop the relationship between Louise and the male lead, Ian, who we learn she is going to marry and have a child with. Having her confide in him or having her reaction be more akin to concern and fear only to try and brush it off when he asks but he calls her up on it. Having him be let in on this info would allow them much needed interaction given their romance plotline as well as bringing him into the complication and able to actually influence the plot. He literally ends up reduced to a human shield. That's the only meaningful impact he has on the plot. Look, the importance of characters in an enjoyable story is subjective. I know this. I appreciate some people are happy to enjoy a movie with an action-packed plot despite the characters being overly perfect, barely speaking, and overall just not very human, and a plot with an alien invasion, well that certainly, surely, falls under the umbrella of action pact. Except, Arrival is incredibly slow moving, and I really do mean that in the most literal sense. They move really slowly, and the director, for some reason, chose to keep the full shots in the edit. Throughout the middle of the story, once you start paying attention to how slow moving it is, it's really 
really obvious. Scene after scene of no talking, no emotions or reactions, just walking from A to B. I guess it's supposed to build suspense, you know, like the long pauses game show hosts do, only to end up throwing to an ad break anyway. Except in the middle of a movie, where I don't care about the characters, and not enough has really happened for there to be any sense of urgency or stakes, long pauses do not build suspense. They build frustration. The pacing is also odd as a result of the use of narration. I've spoken before about narration at the beginning of a movie being a thoroughly uninventive but nevertheless effective technique. Narration in the middle of a movie, on the other hand, well, for me, it pulls me right out, it reminds me I'm watching a movie and highlights that everything I've sat through can just be summarised in a few sentences of narration. It really undermines the build-up. The pacing improves dramatically towards the end, real stakes introduced to bring meaning and urgency to the desired outcome of interpreting why the aliens are here. However, the ending brings with it a new issue. I won't even go into all the questions I have and ways things seem to contradict each other or just need a thoroughly convoluted explanation to make sense when much simpler options seem to be readily available. The ending definitely does give off a character choices servicing the plot rather than the plot and characterization having an organic believable relationship. But that's a, that's a small complaint in the scope of the complaints I have. <laughs> My large complaint is much simpler. The ending is unearned. It's unsatisfying. Louise does what she does to convince the Chinese military to cease their retaliation because she sees a vision of the future where she learns that's what she does and that it works. At no point does she make a decision. No wonder she has no character development. She doesn't have to go through any process of trying and failing, of having to embrace new perspectives, acknowledge her flaws, or, well, grow. She sees a vision of what she does, and she does it. The only active choice she makes is to step into the alien pod when it lowers for her. Whilst, yes, another character may not have done this, may have turned and run when the pod lowered, it's still a severe lack of agency, and she makes this pivotal decision without knowing it will in any way further her desired outcome. Louise is a tool within the plot. She learns the language, and so is able to be the person who sees the future and acts out what she sees. That's it. And it makes for a severely unsatisfying ending. Okay, so we are not here for a fast-moving, action-packed plot. We are not here for likeable, interesting characters who grow and develop. We're not here for a well-written plot with satisfying payoffs or for interesting academic ideas. So what else could this movie possibly be giving its audience? Well, what about emotional impact? <laughs> and a boy is this movie stuffed with artificially inserted attempts to yank at our heartstrings. I won't lie, learning Louise's future child is going to die of a rare disease, that Louise had to live every day of her future knowing that this was going to happen, it's effective. It's hard not to consider what choice you'd make in such a situation and in doing so get caught up in the emotion. I actually think that it's a really interesting angle to explore living with the aftermath of knowing the future. And had the story been about that, the whole alien language granting the ability to see the future, just backstory. Had this been the direction the story went, a more character-driven emotional story exploring the meltdown of Louise's and Ian's marriage, perhaps Ian's attempts to prove that the future Louise can see isn't set in stone, his frustration at Louise's acceptance of the situation, Louise meanwhile having to recognise that her motionless shield is a coping mechanism that is in itself pushing 
the man she loves away. Probably a very bittersweet ending, a situation with no right answer, but I don't know. I'm just illustrating how it's a rich topic to explore, but in Arrival it is literally nothing more than a clue to the resolution of a completely different plotline. The emotional impact of the story all occurs long after the story has finished. Think of it in a similar way to if the emotional impact was all just in flashbacks to the past that had no bearing on the actual present. It's an afterthought, an opportunistic realization that the story requires Louise see flash forwards throughout, so we might as well pack a punch with them. Get some tears because a child dying is always sad. For me, the two very different plot threads of the alien invasion and the exploration of the consequences of seeing the future do not work well together. Both feeling weakened by not being the sole focus and not getting the time they need to tell a rich and well-developed story. And with that, I think I have covered my main complaints with Arrival. The premise is not smart, it doesn't make sense. The main character is not someone I can connect to and root for because all I know about her is she is above having to explain her work-related decisions to her superiors. The love stories are built upon barely any interaction between the love interests, the pacing is extremely slow, the main character's agency contributes extremely little to the overall resolution, and the emotional heartbeat of the story occurs long after the resolution. Oh. And the story is really, really pretentious. Gaveston. He says it means an argument. What do you say it means? A desire for more cows. Pack your bags. I get it. We're all so smart, but oh, it just, it just grates me. And yet, this is not a disliked movie. It has good ratings. It did well at the box office, and plenty of people I know have raved about it. It's curious. I recently spoke about the importance of a descriptive approach to expanding our knowledge of writing, approaching things from what impact do particular techniques have and is that the impact I want? And it seems that Arrival does hold some secrets for how to write a commercially successful script. Personally, I wonder about the rewatchability of this movie, if maybe the first watch is interesting and enjoyable because the story has some cool ideas you may not have been introduced to, and during that first watch you don't know where things are going, but it feels like they're going somewhere. I wonder though if a second or third watch through the slow pace and frustrating characters might be a lot more obvious. Or maybe I'm just wrong. But I think I might be right. That likeable characters, careful pacing, thrilling, satisfying endings do have a place and are worth striving for. In any case, that's it from me. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and see you again soon. Get your bum out of frame. Come on. Come on. Look at that cute. Ooh, ooh, there's a tail. Okay.